Oh! Uh. I told y'all, here they come now. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Good evening, I'm Terrence Lewis. And I'm Imani Briscoe. And today on PSN, we'll be covering the various sports organizations in Philadelphia that show how Philly gets fit. Speaking of um, exercising and working out, I tried to exercise last night too. What happened? <laughs> it just didn't work out. I, I ran out of time. <laughs> wow. That joke just jogged my memory of the Broad Street Run. What is that? The Broad Street Run is a 10 mile course. And it starts at Broad and Olney and ends at the Naval Yard. This year was the 33rd annual Broad Street Run, in which over 40,000 people ran. This number includes over 700 youth that are part of the Students Run Philly Style organization. So what's like the Philly style of running, like with the cheese tape? No, 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 no. <laughs> but instead of me explaining, let's just watch the clip. Cool. <laughs> I'm Imani Briscoe, here with Poppin. Today we're at the Broad Street Run, where students from Philly Style has come out to raise money for the fight against cancer. Now, let's see if we can find some people to interview. <laughs> students from Philly Style trained and prepared over 600 students from all over the Philadelphia area. How long have you been preparing for the race? Um, for about a few months now, like just running different meets and stuff. Yesterday, I ate a lot of carbs and I've been training, so. And students run, um, they train us uh, three times a week. So we were, we were uh, trained very well for this race. Students Run Philly Style is a youth mental organization that uses marathon training to help students identify, set, and achieve long-term goals. Who can um, participate in this race, Dina? Anyone. It's our motto is just commitment. So it's it's just whoever can commit to that time. So what do you anticipate about the run, challenge-wise? The length, the hours. Last year I did this run an hour thirty-nine, and this year I'm trying to go shorter, like an hour at twenty. Challenge, man. Ten miles. I got to run all the way from here to the Navy Yard. That's that's a while. How do you think you'll cope with that difficulty? Oh, I got my music, so you know, I'm just going to tune out. I'm going to just do my best, you know. I'm going to push myself. Is there any one particular thing you're excited about today? Getting the medal, yeah. Why is it important to you that you run today? It's important to me because I've been practicing for long, and to quit right now is just a waste of practice. What are you excited about? Well, I'm, I'm excited just to run this race. The fact that I'm able to run is a privilege. After completing the race, the students rallied at the Naval Yard. Today I'm here with Chanel Barr and Grant Lee Whitaker and they just finished the grocery run. Do you think that the people that supported you, they had a big impact? It was a great experience all together but you know 
the community really has a great impact on this whole race. The program is so much more than running and I can really I can really see that year to year and throughout the season. Because there's a lot of people cheering on and my family support and friends and just it kept you going even when you went to stop. Through the students from Philly style, have you gained any um, experience that can help you in life in general? Um, I think like goal setting. Like I didn't think I can run a marathon. I didn't think I could do Broad Street and I just set myself to it and I did it and I can just do that with schoolwork, anything. And I think that really helped me. If you go walk to your fridge, you can definitely run. Just come and join and you, you'll see. We've walked, we've ran, and now our journey is coming to an end. We've seen how students run, Philly style. And we've also seen how important it is to have support while also being support for others. So that's all, and that's what's popping. So, like, the Chicago style of running would be with a windbreaker? Woo. Okay, let's just squash that topic. Okay, squash, really? Okay, no, say no more. Well, I've been dating this squash player recently. How had I been going? Well, I thought it'd be a ball, but it was just a racket. <laughs> Wait, what's squash? It's like wall ball, but with a tennis racket. Sounds interesting. Let's check it out. Hey guys, I'm Keyshawn and I'm here at an organization that's focused on mentoring and tutoring youth. And here's the catch, they also have this cool sport called squash. It's sort of like tennis and wall ball all mixed into one. They're here to help the kids, so let's go see what's popping. Squash Mart started off for one reason, um, to work with kids from the Philadelphia Public Schools who don't have the opportunity to take part in organized sports after school. It's great. It's not a lot of organizations like that out here. And of all the great aspects of this organization, what is your favorite part about your job? I love coming to work every single morning uh, because one, we have an incredible staff. They are very, very dedicated to this mission, uh, and two, it goes without saying, the children, the students themselves. To watch a sixth grader become a high schooler, to become a college student, to become a young adult. Uh, to write a recommendation for a child who's applying to colleges or applying for their first job. And having known that boy or girl for eight, nine, ten years is something special. Hey guys, I'm here with Donnie, and Donnie has been a member of Squash Marts for about two years now, and we actually are both rooting for the Miami Heat, so he's cool with me. So, Donnie is going to individuals in Boston, so tell us a little bit about that. It's really fun, you actually compete against other teams, and then they give you plates, if you like, whatever plates you come out, give you silver plate, or a gold plate, sometimes trophies. Wow, that's amazing, are you excited? Yes. So, what's your favorite thing about Squash Marts? That I'm really good at it. <laughs> yes, I'm here with Belkis, and Belkis has been a member of Squash Marts since September. So, Belkis, tell us about um, Squash Marts, and also, what's your favorite part about it? Um, well, my favorite part of Squash Marts is how we get to learn and play squash. 
So tell us a little about the tutoring. The tutoring help you in like your homework that you need more help in. What is the most challenging thing? Like was it really challenging to learn how to play it? Yeah, it was really challenging because I didn't know how to serve the ball or hit the ball. So now you're pretty good at it? Yeah, I can't say I'm pretty good, but I'm good. All right, and also, what would you say to a youth your age and encourage them to play squash themselves? Um, um, kids my age, I will encourage them to play squash because they still they stay in shape and they be healthy. All right, it was a great interview. Give me a high five. You were great. Hey Poppin' fans, I just left Squatch March and it was an amazing organization. I learned so much and I can really tell that it really helps the kids and it even helped a lot of them improve their grades. I learned how to play Squatch March, I wasn't that good, but hey, who's counting? It was great and I would recommend anybody to go to it. So, that's what's poppin'. Oh my god. What's so funny? Yesterday, right? I rode my bike twice. Yeah, so. So that makes me a recycler. No more fines to pay, baby. Woo! Holla. Holla at your boy. That joke no. earned you five seconds of the silent treatment. Five, four, Wait, hold on. I know it was only three seconds, right? But when you said earn it before I forget. Did you hear about the um, Earn a Bike program? No, what's that? It's a program where um, students learn how to repair bikes and they get to keep them at the end. It's amazing. Wow, we should go check that out. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of Poppin'. Today, we're at Neighborhood Bike Works in North Philadelphia, which is near Poppin' headquarters. Let's go see how you stay fit with biking. The Earn a Bike program is a free program that runs over the course of eight weeks, where youth between the ages of 8 and 17 learn the basics of bike maintenance, safe urban riding, while also learning about health and nutrition. Students earn the very bikes they learn to repair through collecting hours. How did you hear about the Earn a Bike program? I had a neighbor on my street that lived up the street from me. He actually told me about the program. And I went in and looked at it one day at the school to see how it was. And it like something I could do, so I gave it a shot. Um, well, the things that I'm getting from this, I'm getting motivated. I'm getting like energized. And like, it's actually keeping me out of trouble because like, I used to be hanging out with the wrong crowd. So like, that actually got me, on, got me back on track. What do you think the purpose of this program is? Keep kids out the street. It's fundamental. They learn. They're learning. Uh, there's not one day they can come in here and say that they learned the same thing twice. What do you like about the program? I like about it is that you can help other people with their best. You can work on your bike. You can earn um, extra hours. Sometimes you come early. How can youth get involved in the Earn a Bike program? Uh, all that youth would have to do is come in, fill out a application and we'll get them a phone call on when the next class will be starting. What do you like best about this program? Um, what I like best about it is that the kids actually, they come from different parts of the city, but when they have bike words, they actually do rock out like they're one team, like they've known each other their whole lives. So what do you think you're giving the youth that come here? A little bit of everything, encouragement, stamina, they <laughs> some good kids. So what do they give you in return? They show me how good of an instructor I am. They actually show me where I can be better at on my weak points. How often do you meet here? On Mondays and Wednesdays. Bye.
How do you like to move? I like to frisbee. Like, how do you throw the perfect frisbee? Well, you just toss your hand like that, like you turn your hand like that, and then just throw it. But you gotta look at the person while you throw it. Okay. What's your favorite way to move? I like the hoop! Oh, check this out, right? I got a joke for you. Ready? You ready? Okay. If you go to a football game and you pay a quarter and the game is terrible, wouldn't you want your quarterback? So, I'm on fire. I'm on fire. So. Don't put me next to no pro pay. Dangerous. Super hot. So anyway, did you ever wonder how football players spend their spare time? Well, I did, so I joined the football team and I got some footage of how me and my teammates train for the next um, season. Okay, let's check that out. Yeah. So what are some of your goals? Some of my goals are to go as far as I can in football and just do good in school. How has being a part of a sports team helped you and your grades? It helps me to succeed, you know, and like, you know, like put myself on a higher standard because if my grades ain't right, then I can't do sports. One of my goals is to go to states with the football team. That would be something great. And a basketball team, that would be, be sick. Some of my goals is to make it to districts with the whole team and future is go to college and maybe just make it even farther in college. Make it as far as possible as God allows me in football. I want to make it to the NFL. I wouldn't mind it. Just knowing, just knowing that I want to be able to play in the game stuff like that, I know I got my, uh, my grades have to be at a certain level. Being on the team helping with my grades by focusing more in class and like staying up with like all my academics and everything. Was poppy. 
All right, let's go. Ready and action. I just need a break. Hold on, look. Can we take five? Oh, okay. Let's take five. Let's take five. My name is Saeed and right now I'm here with Puffer and I'm going to let Tiffany tell you a little bit about what Puffer is. So hi, my name is Tiffany Spragans and I'm with Puffa and so are these guys and Puffa stands for the Philadelphia Urban Food and Fitness Alliance and our focus is working with high school students, these amazing high school students who are standing side by side with me in both South and West Philadelphia and they're advocating around policy and systems change related to changing school meals, active living, and safe places to play. I'm here today with? Uh, my name is B-Boy Effect. So tell me about your shirt. Um, well, we read it as uh, We Break Philly, We B-Boy Philly, and um, it's like a representative of like, like the youth out here, they're not, they're not always, you know, like going around smoking weed, all that. Like we, we out here, we doing positive things and we staying healthy. Like we had a, uh, it, it was, it was like a dance mob, like a flash mob, and we came out and you know we we ciphered up a little bit, we showed our skills, and then when our song came on, we all got together, did a routine, taught it to some, taught it to a couple people. So, you know, we just had we had a fun day. So you think that could change like the stereotype of flash mobs that kids doing is not all bad? That's definitely what we want to change. Like not all flash mobs are bad, you know, not as it's not all oh we 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 at South Street, we about to hit the boy. It's like think 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 back to when flash mobs started. It was like, alright, we're gonna be at Grand Central Station and at 630 on the dot, we're doing this dance. Like that's that's how it was. Alright, so how do you stay fit? Um mostly it's 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 b boy and breaking, like all, all my, my footworks, power moves, it's, it's all fun and it keeps me in shape. I also like to do sports, like any sport, I do, you name it, I play it. You know. One, one moment. <laughs> Why are those here? These, my babies? I'm ready to go to the league, girl. But I thought you wanted to be a filmmaker. You have so much potential. But the NFL, where is that? You know what I'm saying? Money. Well, I hope you don't lose your head, literally. <laughs> Cute, but what you mean? Like, the NFL is a really dangerous sport. And, well, let's just watch the Breaking It Down segment. Then you'll know what I mean. Okay. I'm Lindsey Grafe. And I'm Aliyah Lachey. And we're breaking it down. Oh my gosh, so Aliyah, I saw this picture of these kids online, and they had on shirts that said, Patriots win Super Bowl 42. Well, that's great, but didn't they lose that year? Exactly. How did they get those shirts? It just doesn't make sense. Where could they have found them? Well, was there an article with the picture? Yeah, I think it said they're from Guatemala. Oh yeah, I heard of that story. Those shirts were made before the company knew which team would win, so they donated all the loser shirts to the third world children to wear. Well, that sure doesn't sound like a good donation. I'm sure those children are perfectly aware of who actually won the game. I mean, come on, young boys especially love football and aspire to be football players when they grow up. Very true. Thousands of males even go to college on scholarships for football in hopes to get into the league, which is kind of sad. What do you mean? Why is that sad? Isn't that like the dream for young boys across the country? Well, I said that for a couple reasons. First, most people who are dreaming of being in the NFL or the NBA sadly won't make it. 
and many of the ones who do experience major life-altering injuries throughout their career. Whoa, those are some pretty lofty claims. Why don't we break them down for our audience? According to the National Collegiate Athletic Association research, 1.7% of college players go on to play football professionally, and only 0.08% of high school players do. That means that every year over 1.1 million high school players are dreaming of an NFL career and the mega millions that footballers make, while only an average of 255 players are actually drafted into the NFL. That leaves well over a million young men with quest dreams and sometimes no backup plan. We're not saying that playing sports isn't beneficial to building character and fostering teamwork. And we know that the success of being a pro athlete is tempting, but you can aspire to do great things that don't involve football. That reminds me of something President Obama said. I can't remember what it is. It also means pushing our children to set their sights a little bit higher. They, they might, might think, think they, they got, got a pretty, pretty good jump shot, shot or a pretty good flow, but, but our, our kids, kids can't all aspire, aspire to be LeBron or Lil Wayne. I, I don't want them aspiring to be scientists and engineers, doctors, doctors and teachers, not just, not just ballers, ballers and rappers. I want them aspiring, I want them to, be aspiring to be a Supreme Court justice. justice. I, want them I want them aspiring to be the President of the United States of America. So what were you saying earlier about life-altering injuries? Oh, Lindsay, you didn't know? 5.25 million football-related injuries among children and adolescents between 6 and 17 years of age were treated in the U.S. emergency room. And the number of injuries per year is only increasing. That's crazy. And did you hear that story about Andrew Sweat? He's an all-star Ohio State linebacker who was about to become a free agent for the Cleveland Browns before reconsidering due to health concerns. Andrew explained his reasoning in a Cleveland newspaper interview. He said, football is not worth my health. It's really important to me that I'm able to have a life and a family after football. Football is a great game, but when you have a concussion like that, it's not worth it. Let's see what another former NFL player had to say. After eight years in the NFL, Jacob Bell retired in his prime. These days, his focus is on staying fit, <sighs> keeping healthy, <sighs> recovering from past injuries. The first time you sprain your ankle, you're thrown off. But the injury that concerns him most is one he's not even sure he has, injury to his brain. We're now seeing that there is a clear-cut proof that the trauma incurred during football leads to later problems in life. It takes a big man to like walk those. away from the fame and fortune of pro football, but at age 31, the six foot five, 270 pound guard is doing just that. Now, Aliyah, I want to make it clear to our audience that we're sports fans too, and we don't want to discourage people from pursuing their dreams. Yeah, and the main point I want to get across is that young men are relying too heavily on their bodies and not enough on their minds. Even if you break your bones, you'll never break your mind, and your education is what you'll always have to fall back on. By all means, push yourself to be something great. But greatness doesn't only happen on the football field or the basketball court. Greatness involves more than just your body. You need to use your mind, too. You might be as perfectly ripped as Adrian Peterson, but your mind will always be stronger than your body. So by all means, take that college football scholarship. Educate yourself on their dime, but show that school what you can do on and off the field. And stay healthy, poppin' sports fans. Tune in next time for more help with Breaking It Down. I'm not as strong as I used to be. Well, that's all from us here at PSN. I'm Terrence Lewis. And I'm Imani Briscoe. Good night.